Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this acrylic painting tutorial is going to show you how to paint a cute little owl on a branch of a fall tree with a swirly moon sky at night. This is done on an 11 by 14 inch canvas and I'm going to start by using a 3 quarter inch flat brush in the three colors titanium white, dioxazine purple, and deep violet. So you see me loading my palette with those three colors. I'm going to start by painting the entire sky of this background and I'm going to first dip my three-quarter wash brush in some water and kind of tap it dry and I'm going to load it into the white. So this is a really common background that I use with a lot of my paintings. It's a blending technique that blends a bright white, usually it's the moon, a bright white moon and it goes in a circular direction and our colors are going to blend so that they get go from light to dark. So I'm going to start by doing my moon, but this is going to be a larger circle than what the moon actually is so that white can blend with our purple. Then I'm going to do a little bit of dioxazine purple on my brush and I'm going to start on the outside of my white and I'm going to gently introduce that purple into the white so that it blends. So I'm painting in a circular direction and I am gradually going towards that white. So that's the transition zone right there where that white is meeting the purple. I'm gonna spend extra time in that transition zone by painting over that area. And that the colors are gonna blend on the canvas. And I wanna make sure not to introduce too much purple in the center. So I'm just gonna kind of define how big I want my moon to be by doing the outer part of that circle. So my moon, I'm essentially making it smaller by bringing that purple closer to that white. And um, no purple in the center on the moon because that is the brightest white part of our sky. And I'll just kind of gently kind of blend that white that got on my brush outwards. So we're gonna keep working our way out. And I'm gonna grab some more dioxazine purple. So this is gonna naturally show up darker. And so again, start on the outer part do circular strokes and um, very gently introduce the darker into the lighter part. So the transition zone where that dark and the light purple meet, you wanna just kind of stroke over that area several times, work that paint and it will blend. Um, acrylic paint does dry fast. So you wanna kind of work a little bit fast at this. So, um, I grabbed a little bit of white right there and that will help with the blending. So say that purple, that dark purple dried super fast and it's not blending. So if you grab just a little bit of white on your brush and go back over it, um, that'll help the blending. And then just gently paint and blend. Um, our sky is going to get darker as we work our way out, but I also am going to introduce a new color. So this is the... Uh, violet color, the deep, the color deep violet. It's kind of a warm purple color. So it's gonna um, create some really pretty uh, purple shades in there with that purple mixing, with the warm purple is mixing with the cool purple. Uh, but kind of the same concept. So start on the outer part and just gently blend and work the transition zone. So it's gonna create some different um, depth into the sky. You don't have to use this deep violet. If you don't like the look of that warm purple, you can actually just take that dioxazine purple. That's that cool dark purple that we're using. Um, and you can use that for the entire sky without introducing that warm purple. So if that warm purple is take, making things a little too complicated, that's up to you if you wanna omit that color. But I think it makes um, the two colors blend really pretty together. So I'm just gonna continue painting in a circular direction. So when you get to the edge of the canvas, you still wanna paint in circles, but obviously your circle is going off the canvas. So the direction of your stroke is going off the canvas. So it's up to you how far you wanna go with that deep violet. And um, I'm going to do more of the darker purple here in just a little bit as I go further away from the sky. But this creates a really pretty warm purple glow around our moon further out into the sky. So I'm just continuing to kind of just bl gently blend that. And I'm gonna go more outwards and grab some um, a little bit more of the deep violet over here. 
go have that deep violet go out a little bit further before I introduce the dioxazine back into the sky. So if you want, you can actually take the deep violet and go all the way down with it. There's going to be a hill on the bottom here, but I'm not worried about that hill yet. I'm going to cover the entire canvas with this technique. So I grabbed the darker purple, the dioxazine purple, and I'm going to allow this color to transition back out to that dark purple so it's dark, especially on the bottom. So I'm just going to keep blending that dark purple with the warm purple. And your blending does not have to go be smooth. It's okay if there are streaks of color in there that aren't blended all the way. It actually gives it a pretty effect when it's not um, completely blended. So I'm just gently blending that dark purple down. And right here on the very bottom, that's going to be very dark down here. But I'm still going in a circular direction. So my strokes are not going horizontal. They're still going circle around that moon. One thing that's kind of important to note with this blending is the part that is closest to the moon is going to be dry at this point or drying at this point. So it's going to be hard to go back and work that area if you need to go back and blend it some more. Um, I can show you a couple things that you can do to kind of work around that concept of it drying too fast. So if I wanted to go in and add more white closer to the moon, I just wiped my brush off and grabbed some white, I would have to add the color. See, it's not blending with that color. It's just applying a new layer. But I want this part to be a little bit brighter, so I'm just kind of dry brushing that white. It's not a thick, opaque layer of white, but it's a thin layer. Um, there's only a little bit of white on my brush and I'm just gently painting that area. It's not really mixing with the paint that's already there because it's been, it's drying. So um, just kind of working that white in that area. And then you can also redefine your moon. So if you wanted to apply another coat of paint um, just to the moon, I recommend doing that with a round brush. So I'm actually going to grab my number eight round brush here and I'm going to do another coat of paint on my moon so, and I'm going to kind of define my circle too because my circle is a little wobbly. So this is just the round brush and titanium white and I'm just applying that white right there. It also makes that moon super bright because you have a very opaque bright titanium layer of paint right there. So there's my circle. And then if I feel brave enough, I might even like do some dry brush strokes with that round brush um, to create some moon beams around that moon. Um, you just want to make sure there's not a lot of paint on your brush when you do that. Kind of defining my circle a little bit more there, but um, wiping the brush off. So this is dry brush and just on the outer part of it, I'm dry brushing that white around that moon very gently and just creating some um, very, very translucent white strokes around there. Kind of adds more to that swirly effect. Completely optional if you don't um, want to do that. If you want to simplify it and not go back and touch up your moon, that's up to you. And then if you want to do a little texture in there, if you wanted to add just a teeny bit of purple to your brush and do some texture on the moon, you can do that. Um, but it's not going to really be noticeable because our focus of the painting is going to be the owl and the tree. And a lot of the things in the foreground are going to be more noticeable than if we have texture on our moon or not. So when you are done with your background, you don't have to wait for it to dry to go on to this step. I'm going to do the toothbrush splatter paint star technique. Uh, um, this is, if this is the first tutorial you're watching of mine, um, I do this like all the time. I have a toothbrush that I designate for my stars in my painting. And so I usually do a little bit of water on my finger and apply that to the brush and then grab the white and then put that on the brush and flick it. And that, us that usually is the right consistency of water to white. But you need to test it first before doing this because you don't want to mess up your painting. If the white is too thick, it's going to splatter too thick. If it's too thin, it's going to drip and it's going to mess it up. So test it out on a surface 
first, you want to have your white slightly watered down for it to create that really pretty um, fine little dot effect. And you're just going to flick your toothbrush all over to create stars. It shows up on the darker areas, but you can do it all over. Next, I'm going to paint the ground. So the ground is very simple. It's a first layer of just black paint. So this is Mars Black and a number eight round brush. And I didn't wait for my canvas to dry because this paint has already dried for me, super fast drying. Um, so I'm just gonna use my brush to define my hill. So it kind of starts low on the ground and then it curves upwards on the lower right and then it curves back down. So a um, asymmetric, asymmetrical hill. And then I'm just gonna fill it in solid black. There will be a layer of grass added to this la uh, later, but for now it's just a solid black line, like a silhouette. You'll need a piece of chalk for drawing of the tree, which I recommend, highly recommend you drawing the tree first. It's a very unique, twisty shape style tree. And so this is just a regular piece of chalk. And I'm actually gonna start under the moon. This is where my owl is gonna be perched at. And I'm gonna paint this uh, odd S shaped line, snake twisty line. So it kind of curves under the moon and it twists to the left and twists to the right. And then I'm gonna form the trunk of the tree that goes to the bottom of the hill. The lines kind of extend out on the left and the right for the roots. And then I'm gonna form, this tree has two segments. So the one on the right um, goes, twists kind of to the left and then it twists and gets thinner to the left and then it twists and goes thin. So for the thin branches, I'm not making those into a shape. I'm just drawing the lines. And so those are kind of twisty, wavy lines that branch out into two pieces. And this can always be adjusted when we start painting it in. And then this piece is gonna branch out into three pieces. This piece is gonna branch down into three pieces. Um, we don't want any of the branches to cover the moon, so the branch is going all around the moon. This branch right here, the twisty S snake branch, it has shape, so it goes thin and then, then it gets a little bit thicker when it attaches to the main piece. So there's two main pieces of this tree. Redefining them a little bit. Our trunk's gotta trump it out at the bottom where the roots are. So um, with the chalk drying, it can erase with a wet paintbrush or a, a damp paper towel if you need to erase it. Um, but when you're done with the drawing portion of the tree, you're gonna go ahead and paint it in. So this is the number eight round brush. And um, sometimes I like to start at the trunk, but I'm actually gonna start at the thin branches over here. Um, see how this technique works. But basically I'm doing the thin part of the brush. So the point of the brush where the tip of the bristles are is how I get those thin lines. So I'm only pressing on that point of the round brush. I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it because if I press down on the brush, the line would be too thick. So I want to only use very light pressure on the very tip of the brush. And then, so those are my thin branches. Those are my thin lines and my line's actually gonna get a little bit thicker. So when I want my line to get thicker, I'm pressing down on the brush. So putting pressure on the brush is gonna um, bend the bristles down and it's gonna allow the brush to use more of the bristles and more of the side of the bristles. And so this piece is getting thicker and it's twisting. So I'm just filling that in thicker, basically just painting in what I drew with the chalk painting in that shape. I always um, go my own way a little bit from my drawing, so you're gonna see chalk left over. That's just how I paint a lot of times. You may or may not see chalk left over, but um, when this dries, I'll, I will be erasing the chalk. So I'm just painting this in. Black tends to be kind of a thick color. Um, so that's why you saw me dip my brush in the water a little bit and kind of distributed that into the black. It helps the black to flow a little bit, um, especially doing these kind of paintings with the silhouette. You really, it's 
a lot easier when that black flows for you. So a little bit of water in there is helpful, and but not too much. You don't want it to be dripping down like watercolor. And so we got, we're back here on these thin branches. So with the thin branches, I just wanna make sure I'm using that very tip, holding that brush very lightly. You wanna use that point of the brush. If you're using a brush that doesn't have a point, you might wanna to switch to a small, tiny detail brush. So your bristles are tiny and you can get into those tiny um, little branches. Or even if you have like a black paint pen that could help you get those fine lines in, that's okay to use as well. So those branches are kind of twisting and they kind of are intentionally going around the moon, although the branches aren't meeting together in a circle, but no, no branches are covering the moon and they're going in kind of a circular sort of flowy direction. And our leaves are gonna go in that circular flowy direction too when we do the leaves. So I'm just kind of filling the rest of this tree trunk in. And when, um, when you're done filling it in, I'll show you how to get rid of those chalk lines easily if your chalk lines are still showing. I'm just kind of touching up areas. Uh, maybe I can add more branches, especially if I didn't draw them in, but maybe I want a branch here. That's okay to do. Just make sure you're using that very tip of the brush to do your thin lines. So it's up to you if you want to add more branches or not. Make this piece go out a little bit thicker on the right. So when you're done with this, I recommend this is a good stopping point for a break or getting a hair dryer and drying it all really quick. Um, so here's mine dried and this is a, a baby wipe. Uh, if you don't have baby wipes, you can use a paper towel and um, gently add some water into it. And when you erase it, um, you want to just make sure you're doing it very gently and not like pressing on the canvas. You don't want it to lift off any of the paint if you're pressing too hard and the paper towel might be a little bit too abrasive. Um, just very gently. It um, gets that chalk off and it gives you a nice clean look that we can work with. You can also use a clean wet paintbrush to erase your chalk, but oftentimes when I use the clean wet paintbrush, the chalk um, still kind of shows up and lingers after that wet paintbrush dries. So baby wipes seems to work much better for lifting that chalk off. So uh, we are going to do the shading, or not, well, I guess shading and highlighting for our tree, making our tree look brown, a little bit realistic and twisty. Um, you can skip this step if you're simplifying this painting and you just want the silhouette of the tree, that's fine. Um, but I'm gonna show you how to make it look more like a tree and not so much a silhouette. Uh, I have burnt umber and titanium white on my palette. I'm actually going to mix the two together on my palette to make a light brown color. And I'm using the number eight round brush. So I'm gonna start on the left part of the trunk. So this is where all the light is hitting. And I'm just going to outline the outer inside part of the trunk. So this is gonna show up bright against that black. And then I'm gonna have my line go this way because this part of our tree is in front of that left branch. So I'm gonna grab the burnt umber and it's gonna show up darker because I added more of that darker brown in there. And I'm just gonna kinda do these um, wavy strokes down the tree to create this textured tree. It's a tree that has a lot of wavy texture on it. And I'm just gonna continue that wavy thing. The far right part of our tree is dark. So this going, that's going to be the shadowy area. So I'm not gonna add any of that lighter brown to the right part. I'm only gonna add our brown to the left part. So over here, kind of the same thing. Brown on the left part and that time I used a little bit less of that light brown that I made and I just grabbed that burnt umber so that it's brighter on the bottom but not so much bright brown on the top and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of brown to the far right but not so much I'm gonna leave a lot of that black still showing on the far right I'm gonna dip the very tip of my brush in white and on the very, very far left part of it with that white, I'm gonna let that white kind of blend with the brown. 
very gently so that far, far left is super bright. So very, very thin amount of white on my brush. I'm letting that kind of run dry and mix with that brown already. So very loose outlining on the far left. It's going to create that subtle highlight on the far left of our branch. So just a very, very small amount of white right there on the tip. You don't want to go crazy with that white. That white is super bright and it's, it would take over fast if I tried to blend that back in. Don't want to blend it back in. I just kind of had um, add a few wavy strokes of that white in with that tree. But again, don't let that white take over too much. Then I'm going to repeat this technique to our other branch. So grabbing that lighter brown starting at the top, that's where that moon would be hitting that area, and do these twist or wavy strokes in there, grabbing that darker brown and gently introducing that back into the black. It kind of, it's, it's almost like that brown kind of runs dry into the black, but I'm making um, the dark shadowy part of the tree is what's left over of that black that's still showing through. So I don't want to cover all my black because I still want a lot of contrast and dark shadowy areas in my tree. And then teeny bit of white in there, just very, very subtle. Um, don't outline the entire tree, just a few little wavy strokes in there is enough to give it that um, little boost of highlight. And then right here, let that piece kind of stand out a little bit more since that piece is in front of the other branch piece that's behind it. And then I'm just gonna continue this technique. Um, the bright part of our branch right here would be on the top because that's where that light from the moon would be hitting it and the dark shadowy part would be on the bottom. So again, adding the light brown first and then grabbing the darker brown blending it, grabbing that tip of white on your brush and just doing very, very subtle little bright white wavy strokes at the very top. But we don't want those white lines to be thick at all, very thin and subtle. And then um, these smaller branches, you can actually let those smaller branches be if you don't want to go in and do highlight those. Um, but since we don't have a lot of shape to work with, um, we don't have to do um, the dark and the light and the white in those tiny branches. And I'll kind of show you what I mean by that in a second. I'm just going to continue um, working these branches with the browns. Just be really careful when you get to those thinner branches, especially when you're highlighting them with the white. So with the smaller branches, we can actually just grab the white on our brush and use the white to just very gently highlight those areas at the top or wherever, whatever angle it would be where that light would be hitting it. You can add a little bit of brown in there, but again, there's not a lot of um, shape to paint in. So there's not a lot of surface area to paint and highlight. So you don't really have to go in too much detail with those smaller branches. I'm going to continue with this branch piece. The angle of the camera got cut off there, so I'll move it there. There we go. Um, so just a little bit of white. You see how I'm barely, barely letting that white show. Picked up my brush and held it very lightly in that area, so only little bits of white are showing on those top branch pieces. Again, and um, the highlight would be on the bottom of those branches because it just depends on um, where that light is hitting. So just be very gentle with that white, very subtle. Hold that brush very lightly. Let it kind of bounce on the canvas so it's not a continuous white line. I'm going to add just a little bit more texture to our tree trunk right here. Just a few kind of wavy strokes in there, but nothing too drastic. And then if you do something like that and maybe it's too bright, you can always grab the darker brown or even if the black you need to and you can go back and you could 
um, darken it up or add more shadow into it. Um, but that is it for our tree texture for the most part. I can maybe a little bit right here too. Um, but after this, I'm going to be demonstrating how to do the grass on the ground. So you want to go ahead and rinse the brush and set it to the side. And we're going to load our palette with a new color. We're going to use the color Hooker's Green Hue Permanent and Titanium White. And I'm also going to add a little bit of yellow to my palette. So this is primary yellow. And I'll be using the eight round brush for the grass because it's got a nice tip on it. If you don't have a eight round brush, um, any small round brush with a nice tip will work for this technique um, because we're gonna make paint very thin uh, blades of grass here. I'm gonna make a light greenish yellow on my palette. So um, about equal amounts of the dark green and the yellow and the white. So maybe uh, one to one to one um, to make kind of a light spring yellow green color. And I'm gonna get that paint to be right on the tip of that brush. And so when I do the grass, I'm gonna start on the furthest, um, so on the top of the hill and behind our roots on the bottom of the tree, I'm just gonna flick the brush upwards in different angles to create the grass blades. So these are brighter and they're further in the distance. And so I'm just gonna do that along the top of the hill. So make sure that paint is right there on the tip of those bristles. They're just gonna take it and just quickly flick it up and it's gonna create some thicker ones and some thinner ones depending on how hard you're pressing on the bristles on the brush. You don't want to press too hard. You want the lines to be very thin. So you're just doing in different angles and those angles could be overlapping each other. I'm going to wipe this off and I'm going to grab um, just the, 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 the green that's not mixed with the other greens. And um, there's still a little bit of that lighter color on my brush as well. I'm going to do a second row of grass. And these ones are a little bit darker than that further row, but kind of the same concept. I'm just flicking my brush in different angles to create that grass using just the tip of the brush. Um, you can also do this technique with a flat brush. So if you use the flat edge of the brush and hold the brush in a vertical or angular direction, you can use the tip of the brush to create those thin lines uh, or even an angle brush. An angle brush would also work for this technique. Sometimes you can achieve the same thing um, with a different brush depending on what you feel more comfortable with. So I'm just going to continue to add uh, layers and rows of those grass blades. Maybe I'll go back and add more in the back and then add more on the bottom. They kind of get darker on the bottom. So I'm using more of that darker green color on the bottom. That's not really mixed with the lighter green, but there's still some lighter green blades on the bottom. So I'm just flicking the brush, creating those angles all throughout. I'm not trying to cover all that black up. That black would be the shadowy area of our grassy area. So you don't have to fill it completely 100% with grass blades. Just kind of fill it up as much as possible. And you can even um, add some darker ones. So you can mix the green with your black on your palette and it'll create some um, darker grass blades and um, some more um, shadowy areas in the grass and you can have grass blades that are going behind the tree and sticking up so wherever you want and um, just fill it up until you're happy with it. I'll be doing the fall leaves next. And for the fall leaves, I'm actually going to switch to a different brush and load the color Pyrol Red on my palette. So this brush is a number four round brush. It's smaller than that eight round brush so that I can do some smaller strokes. And this is the Pyrol Red color. It's an opaque red, meaning that it's going to have good coverage and show up against our dark background. 
So if you have the color Pyrol Red by Liquitex Basics, it's a nice opaque bright red you can use. And so the style of these leaves is actually a um, kind of a elongated leaf with a point and a rounded bottom. So this step takes quite a bit of time to do, but it's super relaxing. Um, if you don't want to do this style because it's very tedious and um, little, um, it takes a while, you can always uh, just do dots on your brush. So you can just stipple little dots for your leaves. Um, but I, I decided to do it this way just to do something different. Been doing a lot of trees with dot leaves and wanted to try a different style of leaf. Um, one thing that's um, kind of important about this is that the direction of our leaves are kind of um, going in a spiraled direction because the wind is blowing. So when you do your leaves, you want to kind of make them pointed in the direction that they're falling. So they're falling and and blowing in a, a kind of a circular direction. You can see the direction of the leaves on the bottom of the bottom of the branches that are going towards the right. And then up here, they are going in a curved direction around our moon. So um, you can have your leaves attached to any part of the branches, especially on the ends of the branches. So it's just kind of, I'm just doing it in like two strokes. So one curved stroke going one way, another curved stroke going the other way. The end of the leaf is kind of pointed. So you're basically just going to fill that up and your leaves don't have to be on the ends of the branches. They can be kind of in the middle, like right here. They can be in clusters of two or three, or they can be by themselves. And then of course we have leaves that are falling off the tree. And as they're falling off the tree, they would be going in um, that circular direction. So over here we would have leaves. These ones are still attached to the tree. And I'm not doing highlighting or adding white or darker colors. All the leaves are just one coat of that pyrrole red color. So down here, they are falling off the tree and just pay attention to the direction that they're falling in. The point of the leaf is going in the direction that it's blowing and again in that curved direction. So I'm going to go quiet here for a bit while I finish up this step. Again, it's up to you how many leaves you want. You can stop whenever you feel like there's enough leaves on your tree or you can keep going. There are a few leaves on the ground in the grassy area, so I'm just going to paint a few of those shapes down here, but not too many. Next, I'm going to demonstrate how to do the cute little owl in this painting. This step is a little tricky because our owl is small and he's got a lot of details on him. Um, so right now, I'm 
you see me loading with the yellow, the primary yellow and the titanium white. Um, when I do owls, I often like to start with the eyes and then work my way out. Um, but I also recommend getting, it would be too small to draw this with the big piece of chalk, but if you get a chalk pencil and kind of sketch out your little owl, that's gonna be very helpful for painting him in. So you kind of have an idea of how you're gonna paint him in. So I did started with two circles for his eyes. Those circles are touching each other and then a little tiny upside down triangle underneath those two circles. And then I'm gonna take, I'm um, gonna draw a circle around both of those circles and those curved lines above the eyes for the ears and a top circle for the top of his head. And then I'm gonna do a curved line going down to the branch on each side and I did not draw his tail yet. So now I have kind of a sketched out idea of my little owl. You can see how tiny he's gonna be in that smaller area. I guess if you wanted to make a bigger owl, you can. But I'm gonna mix a yellow and white together to make a lighter yellow, but it also allows my yellow to be opaque enough um, to have good coverage. So yellow tends to be kind of a translucent color. I'm gonna start by painting those two circles that I drew first. So I'm painting two circles yellow. Those are for his eyes. So there's my two circles. I am using that number four round brush, so it's a small brush. If you find this brush is still too big for this, you can always find an uh, even smaller brush for this detail. I'm gonna rinse and wipe, and then grab just the white this time, and I'm going to paint around those two yellow circles. So those are the outer parts of his eye. I wanna try not to let that white um, get too close to that. Well, it, it's right next to the yellow, but I don't want that yellow and white to blend together. I just wanna paint on the outer part of it. And I'm going to wipe my brush off and grab the brown. So the burnt umber color and I'm going to take that and do the ears so I'm going to curve over and up over and up so on both sides then I'm going to take that and do the curve around that eye and up so curve around the right eye and up then I'm gonna start painting his body in so that we have the shape of our body. So it goes curve on the right and left, goes all the way down to the branch. And if you need to, you can overlap the branch and we can always go back and do his talons or touch up the branch later. So don't worry too much about, I'm just gonna go ahead and overlap my branch at this point. So I'm just filling in the body with that brown, stroking down in kind of a curved direction. And then the tail, do kind of a curved shape going down. Technically it's behind the branch, but we'll touch up the branch later. Then I'm gonna do the top of his head. So I'm re-outlining those two curves um, and then doing a little curved stroke above that for the top of his head. Bring that around our circles a little bit more. Then I'm gonna grab a little bit of white on the tip of my brush and do some texture. And this is such a tiny area, so I'm just doing these really tiny uh, white strokes that are blending with that brown. If it's not blending for you, you can make a light brown on your palette by mixing the brown and white together and just doing little tiny curved sort of vertical strokes. Um, for the wings, you can do curved strokes and a few strokes on the tail. I'm going to rinse my brush now and grab the Mars Black color. This is optional, but I'm darkening up the top part of our owl, so the curved part up here. 
in a little bit on um, the eyes. So do two little dots on the eyes and we'll go in and kind of work the eyes a little bit more. But for now, it's a lot of paint in that area. We're gonna let it dry some. And then I'll do curve around, darken this part up a little bit more so those eyes stand out and curve on the left and the right for the wings. Those are a little bit darker. If you don't like that look, you can just do the brown and not the black. I'm going to mix an orange for his beak, so I'm gonna get this brush all rinsed off and dried, and I will be mixing red and yellow. So I'm just gonna grab red and distribute it into that yellow that I used for the eyes. So it's gonna make kind of an orange color. And then I'll take that color and do our little triangle right there underneath the eyes. Then I'm gonna grab some more of that brown and kind of touch up the left and right of his wings. Maybe add a little bit of lighter color on the top of his head. Then I'm gonna grab a little bit of white right there on the tip of the brush and do a little dot. I'm gonna to touch that up later because I don't like how that looks, the black I wanted. Um, the black pupils of the eyes to be a little bit bigger with the white dot, but I'm going to let that dry before touching that up. Do a little white on his beak. Don't really like that either. I'm going to go back over it. Such a tiny area to do highlights. You want to be really careful if you're doing highlights on him. Um, the tree branch I mentioned earlier that we can paint over so you can get black or that brown and then go back over your tree branch and then I'm gonna go ahead and dry all of this really quick. So if I wanted to do more details on my owl, there's just a lot of paint, and I'm just gonna go ahead and let that dry real quick. Um, but I wanna do touch up on his eye. So I did the white part around his eye. I'm just going back over that part right there, the white around the eye. Touching that up. And then taking that black, use the back of my paintbrush to stamp that. I like how that looks better. Then I'm gonna rinse dry. I'm gonna do his little talons that are overlapping the branch. So you can do yellow or orange. I'm just doing the yellow little strokes, maybe a total of six um, overlapping, very tiny area that you can uh, paint those to look like he's on the branch. And then I'm making this part a few more strokes up there at the top. Then I'm going to go in here and just add one more layer of light brown with the brown and the white just above his eyes. So there's a lighter part right here just above his eyes. And then a few more lighter parts on the left part of his, the both sides of his wings. Just a few textured strokes in there. And I am done with a Mr. Owl now. Um, the last thing I'm gonna demonstrate in this painting is actually these stars. So there's some twinkling stars in the sky. This is just the white and I'm using a 10-0 liner brush. So this is one of those brushes that have very thin bristles, but they're kind of long. So you can do these thin, longer strokes. So I'm just gonna do those diamond looking stars. I'm gonna do vertical and horizontal lines. And um, I'm going to stroke those diagonal lines outwards from the center. So you can do as many of these twinkling stars as you want, but it really adds to the whimsical effect of the painting. Um, I'll go ahead and just put this white on my palette here so I'm not dipping it inside the paint tube the whole time. Um, but you can also do little dots. So I know we did uh, splatter paint stars earlier, but sometimes it looks nice when you choose to do some little clusters of dots purposely in certain areas. And you can just kind of add this all throughout the painting wherever you want. So just kind of take your time. I wanted 
two little dots inside his eye to give him some bubbly looking eyes. Um, but I'm just gonna go quite here while I finish up these stars. Maybe add a few more brighter white highlights to the tree. This painting tutorial has come to its conclusion. Here's a little close up of our cute little owl. I hope you enjoyed painting with me too. And thanks for watching and thanks for painting with me. Bye.